So here we are queuing up for log flume. We're just waiting for, well, we're not waiting for our turn. I ain't blasting through it, but. <laughs> These in a Landy Rover, check this. <laughs> So now they're painted, um, you can see where the masking has done its job. And just removing the diff covers, just slide out. There we go. Just a bit of the rubber band stuck, there we go. Free from in there right through. Just in case peel this little bit of band off here now. And there we have it. So that was basically just used as a mask. Yeah, guys looking good nice and shiny to the next phase so these are the next Jeep parts in for prime just getting these done between other painting jobs and stuff so as you can see there's the uh, sliders steering wheel and the fuel cap So sometimes helping hands don't always work. Like on the back of this suspension bracket, there's nowhere to clip a crocodile clip to. So every now and again, you have to use your imagination. So I've took a bit of foam and a pen knife and I've just jammed that into the foam using the scissors bit. And there's a little pointy bit up on top which I can just sit through that hole at the back there as I'm not spraying the back of these it's only to show from underneath the arches where is it there we go so that's technically made me a new helping hand and there ain't gonna be nowhere paint's getting in the way of that or well, that's getting in the way of the paint should I say so just let these thoroughly dry out, give them a blast with the air dryer just to make sure they are completely dry and then I can get these primed as these will be going a different colour to what I've already done under the arches. And that's under the side steps, the rock sliders. They're also going the same as the axles and stuff like that. Yeah, they're going to get scuffed but rock crash, it all looks good at the end of the day, doesn't it? So. They're ready to go green now. Right, so the axles have cured. It's got some more bits here, like which have been primed. Um, it's gonna go ahead now and fit the alley portals to the ends and bolt them in with some stainless bolts, which I've uh, picked up. And also the brass diff cover, which has now been sprayed. So I'll bolt them up now. Everything's all moving nice and freely. Just need to, um, pop a bit of grease in the ends and the diffs and stuff like that and uh, that's the uh, the rear axle complete for now so here on the 10-3 build I've got a couple of cross members here which will be going in but as I have a few adenized parts already in the center of the chassis and brass at the front and the rear of the chassis um, I'm also going with red with those just to break up the green and to keep with the theme now what I'm using here 
just to give it a light dusting on the top where it won't stick but it's basically just an old like antiques pot stand I got a load of these off my grandma one time what she used to display all like a pots and plates on all her antiques and ornaments now you can pick these up at car boots and probably on eBay but they are absolutely fantastic and throughout this build you'll see various um, like designs of these stands that I use for different things and they are just the greatest tools for painting on and with them being metal you can always bend them into shape to make, thing, make, um, to make things fit as you can see as that were wider that were just falling through but um, once I put this on my rotating table I can get a nice light dusting on the um, top there um, then give it another light dusting after and then I'll be able to flip them do the other side and then um, crack on with those as normal basically using that method for those basically because there's nowhere for me um, helping hands to grab where you're gonna see otherwise it's gonna leave marks where the helping hands were and they'll be visible within the truck so I'm just on with that and I just thought it's another little tip to share with you helps keep the paint jobs neat so as always got myself a nice little warm area and I use a hairdryer a lot on my parts just to warm them up and it also blows any excess dust off and I either sit me cans of paint on a radiator for a few minutes just warming that through while shaking it or sit it in a cup of hot water um, don't let it get too hot room temperature is ideal but you want a nice good bond and also just before I um, paint the plastics I also put them through a very deep clean a deep scrub and then with some like 1000 grit 1500 grit just give them a nice light scuff over just to give a bit more bite for the paint to bond to so just nice and lightly there forgot to put it on the rotating table but never mind I'll do that on the next bit come at it from angles so sorry I keep losing you there there we go so it's just had a nice light coat I'll just go at it again from that side just to get any little excess bits I'll leave that and then I'll do the same again on top all round and then put it on the radiator leave it for a good hour or so till it's touched dry then I'm able to flip it over and do the other side so for masking the gearbox what I'm going to use is a little bit of heat shrink and I'm just going to pop that over like the drive shaft parts and things it's easier then like I did with the battery I'm just going to wrap a few layers of masking tape around that just then we can get it to sit snug in there and then it doesn't get inside and the shaft bits for the two speed and the dig I'm just gonna wrap a few small layers of masking tape around that cover that hole and then I am gonna proceed to paint the gearbox also so I'll go over this with exactly what I do then you have a fully understanding on that little masking tip so we know the um, heat shrink fits snug over the shafts. So now I've basically just found a tool that that fits snug over there. Just while I wrap the masking tape around there. So I'm just going to go ahead now and wrap the end of that with a bit of masking tape. So it's virtually the same principle as we did with the battery. Apart from the battery we're plugging and this we're just making something to go over. So... I know that fits over and we can just get that in there the gearbox were a fantastic piece of kit to build by the way really enjoyed building that there you go 
and it's as simple as that so that's the gearbox shafts and stuff and the motor plate all there blanked off ready for a nice coat in primer this is now the gearbox all primed so it's had a couple of coats I'm gonna give that a good half hour or so just to dry off and then I'm gonna hit it with a base coat and then every other coat that needs to go on top of that specific base coat in the colour of chores. Yeah, really impressed with this build so far. <laughs> Definitely something I wouldn't normally do, but hey up. This bit here, I've um, masked up my servo for one reason, is it sits at the side of the engine bay. Now, I will be painting that red and detailing the engine. Um, there is a part you can actually get, but it's from America at the minute, and with being in the UK, import taxes can be just extortionate. So for now, I'm gonna paint the top of the um, servo in like engine block red. Just so then it matches more the other side, then it's not black. Until hopefully maybe um, the block covers are available in the UK. So that is the only reason I'm painting the servo. The last batch of uh, major parts here that's actually like going on the chassis or within the chassis. Now been base coated in silver. Just gives me that pop that I'm looking for in the light when I uh, lay down the next colour. So we've got the gearbox there, the sump, which a lot of that's gonna have to be hand painted later on before lacquer, just the detail in the oil filter and stuff like that. Couple of cross members and a brace for over the motor housing. So, looking good. Um, rest of the little bits, I've got the servo there. Like I said, I'm gonna match that up so it looks like the other side of the engine. But. Uh, the rest of the little bits that need painting and stuff are basically just bits and bobs to actually go on the body itself and I don't want to start painting stuff until I've painted the body then I can get an idea of how things are looking. Ready for um, it's had its base coat of silver now we're ready for the main coat before lacquer. I apologize for that noise it's my homemade extractor for spraying and what a grand job it's doing. So, one light coat you get a real nice effect and just build that up to where you want it. So just lightly going over it all and then I'm going to slowly just keep building that up So now I'm going to let that dry and then see if I'm happy with that depth of red. If not, I'll uh, just apply another coat. Well, I'm super happy with how the gearbox has turned out anyway. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to go over a little bit more in my truck, whether it be some more tips to share or just current progress of the build. Do feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and I'll catch you all in the next video. Ciao for now guys.